Good morning, everybody. We are going to go ahead and talk about two more rivers today. The first one that we're going to talk about is the Mississippi River. We've covered, at this point, we have covered five rivers. We have covered, uh-oh, I need to go back in my notes because I can't remember all the rivers we covered. Oh yes, that's right. The first one we covered was the Nile River located here in Egypt. The second river that we covered was the Yellow River located here in China. We also covered the Yangtze River, which is also located in China. Oops, I'm sorry, it's down here. And the Indus River, which is located in India, I mean Pakistan, the Indus River located in Pakistan, the Ganges River, which is located in India, and the Murray River, which is located down here in Australia. It starts here in the Great Dividing Range, and it empties over here into the ocean, the Indian Ocean, the Pacific Ocean, and the Southern Ocean. That's where it empties. So today we're going to talk about two more rivers. One of them is in the United States, and that's the Mississippi River. And the other river that we're talking about is up here. It's in Asia, but it's mostly in Russia. It's the Ob River. It starts right here. <clears throat> Excuse me. And this river is unique in that it flows north, emptying out into the Arctic Ocean. It's almost too high for me to reach. But we're gonna, first, we're going to start out talking about the Mississippi River. The Mississippi River is located in the United States. It starts in the far northern part of the United States in the northern Minnesota is where it starts, northern Minnesota. And I used to live very close to where the, the source of the Mississippi River was. That's the very beginning. And it was a very tiny, small trickle, like a stream, very, very tiny. You could easily walk across it. No problem at all. It was not very deep. It was just a very small, tiny little stream. However, as it flows south, the Mississippi River gains depth, means it gets deeper, and it gains width, gets much, much wider to where most of us who have seen the Mississippi River, the, the Mississippi River that we're familiar with, we think, how in the world could Mrs. Campbell walk across that? because the Mississippi River that we think of when we think of it is very deep and very wide. But it starts out very, at very, very small. And it flows south through the entire United States all the way down to New Orleans where it empties out into the Gulf of Mexico. The Mississippi River essentially divides the United States almost in half. It runs right pretty much down the half of the United States. There is a little less than half on the east side of the Mississippi, and there's a little more than half on the west side of the Mississippi, but not quite a third and two thirds. So that is the Mississippi River. The title of this chapter is Dangers in Navigation Along the River. Let's think about that word navigation. I know you've heard it before. How many of you think you know what that word means? Shout it out loud if you think you know what it means. If you said to navigate means to decide where you are going, you are exactly right. When my husband is driving, he will have me navigate. That means I get to decide which route we're going to take, which roads we're going to turn on, how we are going to get to our destination. We are talking about rivers in history. So when we talk about navigate, we're talking about deciding on the river where you are going to steer your boat, how you are going to drive or steer your boat around different obstacles and different dangers in the river. That's what it means to navigate. Now think about this question as we are reading along through this this half of the chapter, and then through the second half of the chapter when we talk about the Ob River. Think about the question. <clears throat> what do you think are some of the dangers that you might face when you are on the river? Just think about that for a moment. I'm going to move mine. Well, no, actually, I'm not, because when we talk about the Ob, we need it higher. Think about some of the dangers you might be facing on the river. And the other thing I want you to think about 
is the difference between pool water and river water. And we will talk about that more towards the end of this chapter. So let's go ahead and begin reading in our world readers. We are on page 20, chapter four. If you have the ability to open up the PDF and follow along as I am reading with you, then please do that because it's very good for your reading ability. It will help you become a better reader. If that's not really an option for you, then just listen carefully as we read along. The title is Dangers in Navigation Along Rivers. The Mississippi River is the title of this section. In the 1850s, a young man named Sam was learning to be a river pilot on the mighty Mississippi River located in North America. In this chapter, river pilot is a phrase, and what it means is a person whose job is to guide the boat safely on the river or to navigate the boat. A river pilot steers boats around dangerous places in the river. He brings people and cargo safely to shore. If he makes a mistake, all may be lost. It is a big responsibility. As Sam once said, your true river pilot cares nothing about anything on earth but the river, and his pride in his job is greater than his pride of kings. Here's the picture that goes with that one. And that is the Mississippi River. That is not the Mississippi River at its very beginning. That is much farther down, much farther south. Like many rivers, the Mississippi changes hour by hour. A stretch that was safe a week ago may be dangerous today. Sandbars form and shift. The water changes course. Currents roll logs over and hide them under the surface. River pilots have to watch out for signs of trouble. Tiny rippets or ripples or a dark patch in the water might be hiding a log or a rock. These things can cause a wreck. There is a lot for river pilots to look out for. Sandbar is a buildup of sand formed by the movement of flowing water. The current is the actual movement of the water, the ongoing movement of the water. Here's a cool fact about the Mississippi River. In 1927, the Mississippi River flooded. It's flooded a lot of times since then too. This historic flood moved enough water to fill 26 Olympic-sized swimming pools every second. So it filled 26 swimming pools, big ones, every second. That's how much water flooded from the Mississippi River in 1927. The Mississippi has other rivers flowing into it. A river that flows into a larger river is called a tributary. Now, a tributary is a stream or a smaller river that flows into a larger river. Two major tributaries of the Mississippi River are the Ohio River and the Missouri River. I don't know if you can see them on my tiny map up here. The Ohio River is over here, and the Missouri River is right, I believe, right here. It's not marked, but that's what it, where it is right there. It's not marked on my map, but I know where it is. At places where rivers join, waters can be very tricky and river pilots must be very careful. Sam was helping out on the riverboat that carried a number of river pilots as passengers. They were checking on the logs and the sandbars and other dangers of the river. The pilots told each other about their own travels. They asked each other many questions. Sam learned a lot, but as the other pilots talked, Sam became more and more worried. Years later, he remembered how he had felt. Sam's full name was Samuel Langhorn Clemens. He wrote many stories about his days on the river. When he wrote the stories, he used the name Mark Twain. You might be familiar with who that is, Mark Twain. Two of Mark Twain's best known books are The Adventures of Tom Sawyer and The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn. These books are both set on the Mississippi River. They tell of the river's charm and dangers, and they are still popular today. There is a picture of a riverboat, a steamboat, I believe. I'll read the caption in a moment, on the Mississippi River. The Mississippi River has a lot of these paddle boats. 
In the 1800s, riverboats were a common sight on the Mississippi River. I don't know if you can see, I'm going to bring the picture as close as I can. If you can see at the back of that boat, back, there's what looks like a great big wheel. And what it is, is it's a paddle boat. As it moves, there are, there are long, flat paddles, they're called, within this wheel. And as the wheel turns, it moves the boat through the water. It does the paddling for the boat. And that's how it moves through the Mississippi or through the rivers, in the paddle boat. And here's one more picture, and it is a scene from Huckleberry Finn. There they are on the raft on the Mississippi River. That part of the Mississippi River is much farther south than the beginning. This scene is from The Adventures, oh, I'm sorry, Tom Sawyer, not Huckleberry Finn. The Adventures of Tom Sawyer, and it shows the characters of Tom, Joe, and Huck, Huckleberry Finn, on the Mississippi River. Okay, I hope you've been thinking about some of the dangers that boats face on the water. Can you think of any dangers that the boats might face? Logs, rocks, sandbars, changing currents, and also rivers that move in, the tributaries, the smaller streams and rivers that join the, riv the bigger river. Those can cause dangerous currents as well. Yes, those are some of the dangers that you face on the river. And let's see if you can think about any differences between the pool water and a river water. Go ahead and shout them all out. Well, for one, most pool water is chlorinated. The Mississippi River is not chlorinated. Nor are rivers chlorinated. Got all these things popping up on my screen. What else do we know about the difference between pools and rivers? If you said a river has a current and a pool does not, you are absolutely right. Also, most pools do not have rocks and logs and sand in them. That's the difference. That is a difference as well. Okay, let's go ahead and get out our interactive notebooks and a pencil. You will need both of those. Remember, we always start each day, each section off with a heading. Your heading is your name, the date. Today is 9 to 20. And the lesson. The lesson today is chapter four. Chapter four. Oh, I just broke my pencil. Let me go grab another one. I actually grabbed two in case I pushed too hard again. Okay, chapter four. Remember, we are now, the river we are talking about now is the sixth, the seventh river we have discussed. So we are going to write Roman numeral seven. It is an uppercase V and two uppercase I's. Uppercase V and two uppercase I's. That's how we always start is with a Roman numeral. And we are going to write the name of the river, which is the Mississippi River. Miss. Is sip P. And we only vowel we are using in that word is it I E. Ms. Miss Sis Sip P. Remember to double all those consonants. Mississippi River. All right, and as always, we are going to use an uppercase A to determine the location of the Mississippi River. Underneath location, we are going to use a digit number one. Where is a Mississippi located? Exactly. If you said it is located in the United States, you are right. It is located in the United States. And the second point underneath uppercase A, so digit number two, is it begins in Minnesota and it flows to New Orleans, begins in Minnesota, 
You can abbreviate Minnesota if you want to. That is MN. And flows to New Orleans. New, the new word, or Leans. We are going to use E A, -A to spell the E sound. New Orleans, Louisiana. You can also abbreviate Louisiana, which is L A. I'm going to now show you my book. Remember, if you need to pause the video while you are looking at the notes, go ahead and pause the video. You can restart it at any time. I am going to move to a new page because I'm at the very bottom. And when I'm at the very bottom of my page, my handwriting gets super sloppy. When we start our new page, we are going to use uppercase B because we are in our fun facts. Fun facts are always uppercase B. Underneath that, we're going to put digit number one. One of the fun facts about the Mississippi River, listen, Many dangers, rocks, logs, sandbars. Say it. Listen. Many dangers, rocks, logs, sandbars. Say it. Pick up your pencils and listen. Many dangers, rocks, logs, sandbars. Say it and write it. Many dangers. Rocks, logs, and sandbars. That one wasn't so hard. When you are finished with that, go ahead and write digit number two underneath it. The second fun fact about the Mississippi River. Listen. Changes course often. Say it. Listen. Changes course often. Say it. Pick up your pencils, listen. Changes course often. Go ahead, say it and write it. Changes course often. Remember, the word often has a silent t in it. We say often, we write off ten. Often. And digit number three, the third fun fact about the Mississippi River. Listen. Other big rivers flow into it, Ohio and Missouri. Say it. Listen. Other big rivers flow into it, Ohio and Missouri. Say it. Pick up your pencils. Listen. Other big rivers flow into it, Ohio and Missouri. Say it and write it. Other big rivers flow into it, comma, Ohio, spelled just like it sounds, and Missouri, Ms. Uh, Soar. E, we're going to use it, ID to make that sound. Okay. Fun facts B. Remember, if you need to go ahead and stop the video, pause it while you write your notes, you can do that. The next thing we're going to do is our vocabulary. Our vocabulary from this section is tributary. Trib. You. Tear. E. We're going to use y -I -E I-E to make that sound. Tributary. Tri. I'm sorry. Trib. All basic code. U. A vowel and an open syllable saying its name. Tear. We say tear. We write tar. It is an R-controlled vowel. Tear. And the last syllable is E. Yeah. I-E. Okay. Let's listen. A tributary. A stream or smaller river that flows into a larger river. Say it. Listen. A stream or smaller river that flows into a larger river. Say it. Listen. A stream 
or smaller river that flows into a larger river. Pick up your pencils, say it, and write it. A stream or smaller river that flows into a larger river. Remember to use very beautiful handwriting so that you can read your notes later. It is important. I'm going to go ahead and show you what I wrote down. A stream or smaller river that flows into a larger river. All right. We are ready to go ahead and begin our next reading section. I'm going to put my pencil down. The next river that we're going to talk about is the Ob River. The Ob River is located up here in Russia. It starts in Russia. It flows north, which is odd for a river, and it empties into the Arctic Ocean. So it becomes much colder as it flows north. The temperature drops dramatically in the Ob River as it flows north. We are now on page 25. You know that captains and pilots of boats face many dangers. In some places, the dangers include ice. One example is the Ob River in Asia. The river's source is the mountains of Central Asia near Mongolia. The Ob River flows north for hundreds of miles. It passes through swamps, forests, and vast wastelands of Siberia. Finally, the Ob reaches its mouth at the Arctic Ocean. A swamp is a flat wooded area that is often flooded. A wasteland is a land that is not useful to people. <clears throat> As the river flows north, the climate changes. Temperatures begin to drop below freezing. Ice forms on the river. The ice creates the greatest danger along the Ob River. Boats that hit a large piece of ice can suffer serious damage. Winter begins early and lingers late in the Arctic. This means that river pilots on the Ob must keep a close eye on the calendar and on the thermometer. And we know what a thermometer is. It is an object that measures the temperature of certain things such as water. If they launch their boats too early in the spring or too late in the fall, they may find huge ice blocks jamming the northern stretches of the river. Because of the cold, ships can travel parts of this river for only a few months out of the year. Oh, that's it. That was the end of that chapter. That was a pretty short section. Okay, the Ob River. <clears throat> All right, we are on the Ob River, and it is Roman numeral eight. Let's go ahead and take our notes, and then we are going to answer the questions. Roman numeral eight, Ob River. Oh, I just broke my pencil. I think I'm pressing too hard so you can see. Ob is spelled just like you think it said, which should be spelled. We spell it a o Ooh, ob, ob, basic code, ob river. Underneath Roman numeral eight, which is a V and three uppercase I's, we are going to write uppercase A and again, location. Underneath location, we are going to use the digit one. The ob river is located in Asia. Say it. Listen. Located in Asia. Say it. Pick up your pencils. Listen. Located in Asia. Say it and write it. Located in Asia. That's all we have for location. Now we are going to use uppercase B for what? Fun facts. That's right. Fun facts. Go ahead and write that down. And underneath our fun facts, again, we are going to write the digit number one. The first fun fact about the Ob River, listen, many, oops, that's the Mississippi River, sorry. The greatest danger is ice. Say it. Listen. The greatest danger is ice. Say it. Pick up your pencils. Listen. The greatest danger is ice. Say it and write it. 
the greatest danger is ice. Oops, I spelled greatest wrong. Silly me. That's why I'm writing in pencil. The greatest danger is ice. Digit number two, another fun fact. Ready? Flows from the mountains near Mongolia to the Arctic Ocean. Say it. Listen. Flows from the mountains near Mongolia to the Arctic Ocean. Say it. Pick up your pencils. Listen. Flows from the mountains near Mongolia to the Arctic Ocean. Say it and write it. Flows from the mountains near Mongolia and Mongolia is Mon Go Li. We're going to use it, I E. Uh, a vowel in an unstressed syllable does not does not use one of its sounds. It's A A A. Mongolia. Mongolia flows from the mountains near Mongolia to the Arctic Ocean. Ark, Ark, be sure you put that k in there. Tick, Arctic Ocean. And finally, our third fun fact about the Ob River. Listen, the climate changes as the river flows north. Say it. <clears throat> Listen, the climate changes as the river flows north. Say it. Pick up your pencils. Listen. The climate changes as the river flows north. Say it and write it. The climate changes as the river flows north. Oops. Skipped a word. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and show you what mine looks like. Remember in this situation, oops, no, we have a definition. Let's write the definition first. The definition is swamp. I think we just have one. Yep, just the one definition, swamp, swamp. That is all basic code, swamp, listen. A flat wooded area that is often flooded. Say it. Listen. A flat wooded area that is often flooded. Say it. Pick up your pencils. Listen. A flat wooded area that is often flooded. Say it and write it. A flat wooded area. that is often flooded. Remember we say often, but we write often. <clears throat> it's one of those weird words. A flat wooded area that is often flooded. There are the notes for the Ob River. Remember if you need to pause the video so that you can go ahead and take those notes down, that is absolutely fine. Just restart it when you are ready. All right, let's, let me put my head back on that shiny spot. Let's think about the questions. Here's the first question. Why is the dry up job of a river pilot such a big responsibility? If you said that because that if you make a mistake on the river, it will be disastrous, you are exactly right. Or if you said something like, there's so many hazards on the river that he has to be very aware. And so his job is really important because he cannot make a mistake. If you said something like that, that's absolutely right. All right. Next question. What does the text mean when it says the Mississippi River changes hour by hour? Hmm. If you said that something like this, that 
that refers to how the current changes in the Mississippi River and it shifts the sand, which changes the course of the river and it changes the hazards in the river. And that some of those hazards can threaten the safe passage of boats. That is exactly right. Here's another question for you. Why do you think that Sam grew worried as the river pilots told him about their travels? If you said something like he was worried because he realized that it's really difficult to stay on a safe course on the Mississippi River or something like that, you are exactly right. And then finally, think about this question and go ahead and write it down the answer in your interactive notebook. Why? Oh, I'm sorry. Was Sam, the character that we described in this chapter, real or fiction? Fictitious. Was he real or imaginary person? And how do we know if he was real or imaginary? And that's something we're going to talk about either Thursday or Friday. Let's go to the Ob River now and let's think about that. What's the greatest danger to the boats on the Ob River? Exactly, ice. Ice is the greatest danger to boats on the Ob River. <clears throat> Why do the pilots of the Ob River have to keep a close eye on the calendar and on the thermometer? That is right. If you said that they cannot be on the river too early in the in the year or stay too late in the year because of the ice you are right and also they have to keep track of the thermometer because once the temperature drops below freezing which is 32 degrees fahrenheit or zero degrees centigrade once that temperature drops below freezing then that's when ice begins to form and they cannot be out on the river when ice is forming all right, now let's think again about the big question. What are the dangers that boats face on the rivers? Go ahead and think about that. And we are going to go ahead and move on to the next chapter, but that will be tomorrow. Actually, that'll be next week because we have a review tomorrow. You guys have a great day. I'll see you tomorrow.